All right, we made it to level 10. All right, so let's go ahead and claim our rewards. Oh, now we got the dungeon fighter finder. We can actually do some stuff here. Okay, we also got three skill points, or three attribute points. And we got some skill points. Okay, so remember to level up the items that you're going to need uh, as you go along. So uh, what I'm actually going to do, because it's very important that we can see the reagents that we need to craft stuff. If we don't see the reagents that we need to craft stuff, we really can't craft anything. It's kind of hard. So I have six points, and I'm going to, in alchemy, I'm going to put in keen eye reagents first. Okay, alchemy is one of the important ones that we're going to need early on. Okay, we do need blacksmithing and enchanting also, and clothing. We need all these, but we're going to put one in it. We don't need, really need to put one in enchanting because we kind of see the runestone as they are. They kind of light up already on their own. Okay, so if you have enough, go ahead and put some more into these um, in Kenai, Kenai. Okay, that way it gives you, you can see it a little bit better. All right, so what, uh, what we're going to do now is since we reached level 10, we should have got a mail, okay, that says, Ciro Dill awaits. Your achievements in Tamriel have been noted. We need warriors of caliber, okay. So now we can go to Ciro Dill. Now, if you're not a PvP player, it's not really that important, but it is important enough that we need to go there because we have to get a skill, okay. And how do we get to Ciro Dill, okay? This should now be on your menu, Campaigns. So we select it. And we want to go to Cyrodiil because we want to do the starting quest in Cyrodiil. Why? We're going to get a skill that helps us move around quicker through Tamriel. That way we can drop the Mundestone, get our, our Mundestone that we're actually going to use, and then we could even be stronger than what we are now. Okay. So these are what they are. It doesn't matter which one you pick right now. Um, I'm going to pick the smallest one right here because I'm, I'm below level 50. Okay, you should probably do the same if you're going to do it. So we're going to go ahead and hit A for enter campaign. Okay, and it says you now may enter. <clears throat> so we wait a second and it's going to load it, load the screen, and it'll take us there. All right, so as soon as we show up, we have this person right here in front of us. We're going to talk to this person. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to talk to, uh, we need to travel to the Southern Merwin Gate, because if you talk to the Grand Warlord, then that means you're going to skip the quest. We don't want to do that, especially for a new player. Okay, even if you're a re re returning player, you probably don't want to skip the quest because it levels up your new skill lines. Okay, so we're going to come right up to the transit uh, sign here. Let me make sure we're going to the right spot. Uh, where are we? We're here. And we need to be over here. Okay, so if you can only use transitive shrines to get around Cyrodiil. Okay, you cannot use way shrines. Okay, so let's go ahead and collect this, or hit this. And we are going to go to this one here. Now, if you're not the Ebonheart Pact, obviously, you need to use the other transitive, sh transitive sh shrines. Okay, so... I believe Alden, um, the Dominion comes here, and you have to go over here to this one. And then if you're in the Daggerfall, you start here, and you have to go over here to this one. All right, so now we've got to where we need to be. Now we just need to find our quest markers and follow them. Okay, now that we picked up the quest, it's telling us that we got to go back to the other side. But we're going to run over here and pick up the Way Shrine first. Because at any time, if you need to leave, you have to use a Way Shrine to leave. You can't leave through a transit Shrine, and you can't jump out of Cyrodiil. So you have to use a Way Shrine. So we're going to pick it up. It's always skill point or er, experience. There's another quest here. Hold a moment, soldier. Our conquest of the Imperial City, that's the spirit. A 
our sappers have established a forward base in the city suit. Here. Okay. That is a quest for um uh the Imperial City. Uh, we don't you don't need to follow that one. That's only if you want to do it. Um that is part of the base game. So if you can do it, do it. But right now we're not gonna do that. It's not important to us. Right, so it looks like we gotta go back over here. All right, and now we need to see where we need to go. Okay, we need to go outside of the gate over here. There's a, in all of your, in all of the places there's a door. So let's run through. I seen that there is a stable here. Well, I run by, always remember to upgrade your horse. Uh, where exactly is the stable? Oh, it's up here to my left. There is another shrine back there and we'll use that one to leave. So that's why we're not gonna pick it up right now. And I guess it's this guy right here. Is this the stable master? Yep. So let's go ahead and upgrade our horse. Oh, still got 12 minutes. Okay. So maybe on our way back out. All right, now there should be a door to get out of here or you can just jump down if needs be. It's over here, here we go. All right. Now, this is a safe area. You don't have to worry about getting attacked by other players. All right, now we're down here. Talk to this one. Careful. Took your All right, so now we just need to fire the weapons, one of each. Okay, and you just got to hit the dummies that are up on the thing. All right, there's one target dummy. Okay, just gain two skill points. Did we miss that one? Yeah, looks like we did. All right, and the next one, catapult. This is gonna hit this guy right here who's close. All right, right trigger for fire. Oh, got him. Okay, so now we go back and talk to this guy. Okay, so now we need to repair. So we need to go talk to this other person. Where exactly is this other person? Somewhere in this area here. Oh no, use a practice for kit. Okay, so he already gave it to us. All right, so all you have to do is walk up next to one of these and you're gonna hit start, inventory, slottable items, and we're gonna select this one, okay? Now we're gonna hit X to assign it and just put it in any open slot, okay? So I'm gonna just go ahead and assign it down here for now. Okay, B to back out. Now walk over here to this one and hit your up D-pad, hold it down right button or right uh, thumbstick down until you select it and now you'll just hit up and you'll see it he'll repair the there we go so now he repaired it so now we got to talk to this guy you are old. your time okay, here good is and we leveled up awesome okay so we now have two new skill lines Okay, so if I go under skills, okay, we have assault and support, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and finish the skill lines on these because we're gonna use rapid maneuver. Rapid maneuver is the one that we're gonna get. Now, if you're gonna be a tank, you need to get to level four because you're gonna use the Warhorn. That's gonna be one of your main um, ultimate abilities. So you need to get to level four. How do you get to level four? By playing in Cyrodiil. But if you complete these three quests, or complete these quests, you will come out as a level three already. Then all you have to do is maybe do a couple uh, battlefield, 
and you can actually level up to level four. Uh, these other skills, they are used in the game, depending on what build you're using, but most of the ones on this one, under support, you won't use unless you're in Cyrodiil. So the assault one is the one that we level up, but they level up at the same time. So it's not that big, uh, they just level up one at, together. All right, so we did level up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get what I need. I'm gonna claim my rewards. Awesome, we got a try, uh, try restoration potion. What that does is we will take a look at it. Let's put in our stamina for me. Okay, we're gonna assign this skill, or assign this. So we're gonna go into inventory, slottable items. We're gonna select this one. Or I'll go, about, uh, get, go on it, and then we're gonna hit X. And we're gonna actually, I'm gonna assign this one into my, where I originally signed the Gold Coast Swift Survivor Elixir. Okay, so now, to access that, I hold up on my up D-pad up, I use my left or right thumbstick, and I just put that. Now, we're not seeing much on our bar right now because our bar is kind of hidden. So what we need to do is we need to do start, options, okay, combat, okay, and we're gonna turn our ability bar on always, okay, always show. We're gonna turn on our attribute bars, always show, resource numbers, number percent, active combat tips, we're gonna always show those. Ultimate number, we're gonna put that one on. Combat text is on, okay. We're gonna leave these in the on position. Now, if you're a healer, um, I believe they're on already. Yeah, incoming healing over time, it's already done. Okay, and our buffs, we're gonna show those all the time too. So we're gonna show all, always show. Okay, and permanent effects. Okay, so now we've got that done, we're gonna hit A. Oh, sorry. We're gonna hit B and we're gonna come out of there. Okay, so now we can see what's going on. Now we got a lot more information on our bar. Okay, so the top, um, if you're looking at the bottom of the screen, you can see that our potion is the first one. Then after that are our skills. Then to the right is our ultimate. Above that is our magicka health and stamina. And above that, those are our buffs and debuffs. So if I go under character, these are the same icons that we can see on the screen. Okay, these are our buffs and debuffs. Okay, these are useful when you know so that you can see what debuff you have on you, what buff you're using. And also when we fight something, you'll see above, we'll see also that there's debuffs and buffs on the character, or on the whatever we're fighting. So let's go follow the quest. Well, since we actually got that skill already, let's go ahead and accept it, because this is going to take forever. So I'm going to go under Assault, Rapid Maneuver. I'm going to buy that for one point, and I'm going to put it on my main bar. Now, I know, don't normally do this, but due to the fact that it's taken forever to get anywhere right now, uh, Stone Fist is already number four. Okay, we're going to leave, I'm going to replace Pierce Armor for now with that. So I'm going to go to Rapid Maneuver, Assign, using the D-pad, go to the right, and I'm going to assign it there. So what does Rapid Maneuver do? Okay, increases your movement speed by 30% for five seconds, and you and your group also gain major gallop, okay? So what that does is when I hit that button and I run, he's a little bit faster. Now if I get on my horse, my horse is now much faster than what it was before. Okay, if you're a stamina-based character, you won't see too much of this being a problem, but if you are a Magicka-based character, you need to keep an eye on your stamina. And we're gonna go ahead and apply a food here because I'm low on it. If you watch the bars, when, as soon as I use the food, they're gonna increase. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna go put it back on my potion. Hit my right button. And now we got more stamina, more magicka, and more health. All right, now we're gonna talk to this one. 
The scroll, the temple is okay. the grand, the elder scroll. It is our destiny to control all. Right. We did report why it is not. Okay, what else can you tell me about the elder scrolls? The scrolls contain the temples are. Okay, I go speak with him. So now we gotta go back to where we came and speak to Warlord Zimron. Okay, get on our horse. I'm gonna hit my right button because that's where I have it saved. My skill to make him faster. And it says we gotta use the door this time for sure. So we gotta find the door. Let's see, where's the entrance here? Okay, it's right in front of us across this water. I think we're taking a scenic route here. Remember to find your door for your faction. The pact needs you. You did. I did. Our conquest. That's the spirit. Okay. Our so we don't need to do that quest there. All right. So now we have another quest here that you can do if you want. Uh, after we're done talking to these, because these guys give us information about what we need to do. Okay. So we talk to this guy over here. There we go. Now we've freed everything up. Now, there is another quest here that you can do with Shegorath. Shegorath. Shegorath, however you say his name. Uh, he teaches you how to use an axe or a hammer. I don't remember. I think it's a hammer in Cyrodiil. So if you're not going to be playing the game that much, eh, don't worry about that quest. It's not that important. Okay, so now we just got another way shrine so to leave Cyrodiil we have to come to the way shrine if I try to jump out of Cyrodiil if I have to if I try to jump out of Cyrodiil it won't let me so if I just pick any spot see it won't let me you cannot recall an alliance war area visit the way shrine to travel so if you're playing the game and you go all the way through Cyrodiil you have to get back to a way shrine before you can get out all right, so next we're going to go back to our home city. Okay, so mine's Davin's Watch. Uh, it could be Valkal Guard, depending, uh, Daggerfall, depending on where you're from. So go back to your home city, and we're going to go to the bank. All right, so let's go into the bank. Okay, we got the new quest, the Halls of Torment. I believe my bank is right there. There it is. Okay. We can go to the bank because we're going to get a NPC here. I believe he's there already. There it is. The housing brochure. Let's read it. All right. So now we've got to find Faland. De Marie and Ebenhart. Okay, I believe she is for me. Do you know how all the way over here. All right, so we got to get to. I've got to get to Ebenhart to get mine. Uh, depending on where yours is, you'll have to get there. But what we can do is before we do that, check your email. 
you're under social mail. You should have received a mail. Okay, we've got some rewards for the worthy. Okay, and we'll take a look and see what they gave us because those they give us whenever we do battleground Cyrodiil stuff, they give us these things. So let's take a look and see what we got. Oh, awesome. Okay, we're gonna look at these individually here. Okay, this one is very important. This is a transmutation geode. Inside of this, there are transmutation crystals. What are they? Well, these help you transmutate traits on your weapons. Now, you don't want to use these until you're at least level 160 because you're just wasting them. Uh, CP 160 is when you can actually get your gear, your permanent gear, but you don't want to use these. Just collect them for now until you actually get your permanent gear. Uh, what do I mean by making a change in a trait? Okay, so we received a staff. A uh, hero restoration staff and it's charged uh, let's say I am let's say this is a fire staff instead of a healing staff and I want I am a damage dealer I want to change this to either precise or infused or even sharpened okay this one says that it's charged so I have to have 50 transmutation crystals in order to do that I will put a video to the link a link to a video that I created that explains it a little bit more all right, so we need to get to Eben. So what I am gonna do is, due to the fact that I have a guild, multiple guilds, I'm gonna go ahead and look in my roster and see if there's anybody in Stone Falls, okay, that else is here. And if they are, then I'm going to jump to them. Now, it doesn't mean that it's gonna take me because I can't really see exactly where they are, but we're going to see if there's somebody else. So it maybe will jump me to a place that's a little bit easier. Let's see. Stormhaven. Stone Falls. Nobody. Nobody. Okay. Looks like nobody in my guild mate. None of my guild mates are in Stone Falls right now. Okay. If you're in yours, in your, find somebody who is there. If you're in a guild, find somebody who's in the region where you need to go. And we select it and go. It'll jump us to the closest way shrine to them. And I don't believe I have anybody in Stone Falls. So it looks like I'm going to have to run all the way through. All right. So through the magic of video, I will see you there. All right. I've arrived in Ebonheart. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the way shrine on my way here I picked up four way shrines and one sky shard got into an epic battle with some mobs all right so we're going over here to this one if you're in Ebonheart you can follow it if not go to the your uh, where the guide tells you to go okay so I guess this one is upstairs yep okay and you have look yeah oh no okay. catch i just oh sure excellent you won't regret this decision i swear hope the room is no just make yourself at home Spru oh what a relief okay good so now i have a house it's right out here so now i can go down And at level 18, maybe it's upstairs. Let's see. Maybe it's actually upstairs. Maybe I missed it. I don't know where this house is exactly. Sorry about that. Here we go. There it is. So now you have your house. All right. So we are in our room. And now you can start putting items in it. Now, you don't have any items yet unless you've actually bought some or got some things that you can make. But how it works is if you look at the bop bottom left-hand corner, you use the right D-pad and B. And now you can put things in. So I go under X for Browse. Uh, under Services, I have stuff here that I can put in. So we're going to put in a chest. Uh, just to do it. So I go down and I select the chest I want. Hit A, place. And line it up. There we go. 
and then I hit A again, placed it. Now I just hit the right D-pad and B, and now I can access my items that are in the chest. Oh, there was actually some stuff in there that I could use. Let's take that one. Let's take that one. All right, and there we go. So now we have it. Now the items I picked up out of my chest are actually kind of important because if I go under inventory, supplies, I pick, I had a motif. I have two motifs in there, dark elf and ancient elf. Okay, now this one I may not be able to use. We're gonna see, So, but I'm sure I can use this one. So I'm gonna hit A for use. Okay, and that allows me to craft in that style. This one here, see I can't use this one. I have to be rank eight. So it's gonna be a while before I can use that one. So now to leave your house, you just go back to the door. All right, I actually skipped over something here and I wanna make sure that you see it. Under your collections, um, mounts, you should have gotten a horse, um, the Sorrel horse by now. I believe it came out actually at level 10 due to the fact that I don't get it again. I kind of I kind of skipped over. I apologize about that. So at level 10, you get the horse. So now you actually have a horse. So you can actually set that as active and you can run around. I highly recommend that now that we've already got this far and you have the horse, I hope you didn't buy one at the beginning because you will get one free. I will put that in the comment section when I put the video online to not get a horse until you are level 10 because you get one for free. All right, so we have a lot of skill points now. Uh, if you've been following along and you're not applying them to anything, right now the most important thing is is to put them in Kenai. Not all of them, just a few of them. Just kind of keep the Kenai because we really need those. They're very important. Now what we need to look for is we need to find a alchemy station. Uh, where is the alchemy station? Is it here? There's got to be an alchemy station here somewhere. Not possible that there's not. Maybe it's inside the main building. Okay, there it is. <coughs> this one's at the Mage's Guild. All right, so we're going to go to an alchemy station because we're going to learn to create a couple potions that are very important. Okay, the alchemy station is... Over here, initiate. Here it is. Now that we're in the alchemy station, we're going to create a potion. Okay, so we're going to do clear them all because I already did it. And we're going to do uh, the highest one that you can possibly do at the moment, which I believe should be clear water. Then we're going to do corn flour. And then we are going to do lady smock. Okay, so... On yours, it may say that it's a new potion, okay, and then you have to create it, and then you actually get this information. But what it is, is it grants us major sorcery, which inc increases our spell power by 26 for 13.1 seconds, and grants us major intellect, which increases your magicka recovery. Okay, so remember, this is for magicka based. So this will increase your magicka recovery for 13 seconds with a 45-second cooldown. So that means that there's going to be... Uh, what is that, 30, 33 seconds of cooldown, somewhere around there. So you're gonna have to wait 33 seconds before you can use this potion again, okay? And you can fix this problem by going under skills, alchemy, and we are gonna go under medicinal use. Now medicinal use hasn't been unlocked yet, but if you have this and you put something in here, uh, point, it'll increase this. So w by the time you get to the third medicinal use, the potion will last longer than the cooldown. So what that means is you only have to apply the potion every 47 seconds instead of every 45 seconds. So it actually gives you more time. Okay, so now if you are a or stamina based, what we're gonna use is we're gonna get the highest level possible Okay, and we are going to use Blessed Thistle and Dragonthorn. Okay, so what this does is it gives you Major Brutality, 
which increases your weapon damage by 26% for 13.1 seconds while restoring 7,582 uh, 7, stamina and increases your stamina recovery. Okay, now once we can use three reagents, we'll actually add another thing onto this. But for now, this will work. Uh, so use these only when battle right now because you only create one potion at a time. Uh, as we level up our skills, our alchemy, you will be able to create more with the chemistry. So, well, actually, once we put one in chemistry, we'll, it'll create two potions. Then it'll, at another point, it'll create three potions. Then the last one, it'll create four potions. So you create one using reagents, and then the other three are given to you. And it goes the same way for poisons. You create one, and you actually get 15 poisons for free. Okay, so that's definitely worth leveling up these when you can because it saves you on reagents. They should have put those easier to get at the beginning because at the beginning you have no reagents. So, but that's okay. So remember to turn on your keen eye. I, I know I say that a lot, but that'll help you find these reagents faster. Find an area where there's water, run around it, uh, through the grass, because that's where you're gonna find most of these for alchemy. Enchanting, we've already seen. Uh, clothing and blacksmithing. Blacksmithing, you're gonna find your re or the the materials that you need close to wall or close to stone walls and stuff like cliffs and stuff like that and also jewelry cra crafting you'll find there uh, close to cliffs and stone rocks and stuff like that woodworking you're gonna find this mainly by other trees in the grassy areas you'll find woodworking clothing uh, is kind of like the alchemy you're gonna kind of find it out in the middle out by where there are trees or uh, grassy areas and stuff like that. And enchanting, you're gonna find in rocky areas also. All right, so now we've created our first potion. And you, the next time you're gonna battle, you're gonna wanna assign this, okay? So we're gonna go under inventory, slottable items, and then we want to assign this now. So we're gonna hit X and assign it to a slot that's easily accessible. So we're gonna hit it here. And there we go. So my next fight, I have this, which will increase my power, which means the fight won't last near as long. All right, so now I'm gonna go back and uh, continue the quest uh, up on the right-hand sc side screen. It says Halls of Torment, into the Harborage. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue this quest line because as I said, we get skill points. Uh, don't forget to look for sky shards as you go. There are many web pages online. So if I'm in Stone Falls, I'll do a search for uh, in gen generally, I will say ESO Stone Falls Sky Shards, and it'll give me locations for Sky Shards. Now, remember, there are Sky Shards that are out in the open. Um, usually, the majority of them will be in open, but then there are Sky Shards that are in dungeons. So you have to go into a dungeon and actually get the Sky Shard and fight a boss and fight groups of people. So if you don't feel that you're up to that now, find the Sky Shards that are outside. Uh, collect those first. And as we level up and get more power, we'll go ahead and um, get the other Sky Shards. Uh, there is Sky Shards in each region, each region of the base game, like all of these here, okay, and all of these here, okay, we'll have 16 Sky Shards, okay. So that means you will get five points, uh, five skill points. They will also have a dungeon, a group dungeon, and every one of them. I don't think we've unlocked any of them yet. Um, there is a group dungeon here. Let's see if it shows on my screen. Well, there's a group dungeon here. One of the Sky Shards is always in there, so that would probably be your 16th Sky Shard. And then there are also a group event where it will give you one skill point. So if you find that you need skill points, go into these group dungeons with a group of friends and do the group uh, fight, and you will actually get a skill point for that. But right now, I think the fastest skill points we're going to get are going to be from doing the Harbridge quests. Okay, the group dungeon icon, just so you can see it, just so you don't go in them by mistake. I'm going to get closer. There it is, the Crow's Wood. If you look on my bar up at the top, we'll see it. That's the group dungeon. Okay, uh, usually don't go in there. Once you, once you get to like 160, maybe even lower, depending on how you fight, if you're a good fighter, you can probably 
finish these dungeons. They're not really that hard. It's just when you're level 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, they are quite difficult. But wait till you get to that level. All right, so I'm going to go back to and start doing some quests in the Harbridge. And when something new comes up, I will let you know. All right, running through, uh, going back to the uh, quest, the Harbridge, I find all kinds of stuff on the ground here. So if you're looking for supplies, for materials, there is my jewelry. Over here is a iron ore. Now each level that you do, it will change colors. So you gotta kinda keep an eye out for these sort of things. Uh, once you start learning what they look like, you'll start recognizing them even without the keen eye reagents. But it does help a lot to have those. I just seen there's a rune. I thought I seen a another piece over here. Oh, there it is. There's some jute. That's for clothing. There's another jute over here. There's a piece of wood. It just comes with experience that you see it. Now, like I said, with the keen eye, it helps out a lot. Now, when you go into the harborage, okay, due to the fact that it is a solo dungeon, it will load new every single time. Okay, so if I go into the harborage, Okay, I'm in the Harbridge. Now, if we look around, see all these barrels? Just select it, and you get crafting materials. Okay, these are all crafting materials. Every time I come in here, I can collect crafting materials. Every single time. Okay, anytime you go into a dungeon, anything like that, just hit all the bar, uh, crates and the barrels and yeah, stuff. Kind of awesome. run sideways a little bit to see if there's anything over there. There's a it's sack. It's got all kinds Your of stuff. In with all these Honestly, crates. Here we go. You feel for that all kinds of items we can pick up. And these are going to help you in your crafting. From food to other things. To look, There's a girdle to deconstruct. There's some fish here, pork. Okay, for my recipes. Take a look around a little bit more. Okay, now every time you come in here, there will be a new book on this shelf of what you've done. So go ahead and look at them every time. Uh, depending on the dungeon, you might have to look around for a little bit, uh, depending on your location. There's some urns there. Maybe you can pick up some materials. Take a look around. There's some more crates. We just got a lot of materials. These are more um, provisioning supplies, but we've got a lot of them. We'll look at the bookcase again, see if we've got a new book. See, destruction staff increased to two. So every time you come in, pick up all those materials, look around on the desk, see if there's anything you can pick up. There's a drink there. We can take it. Over here on this table, there's nothing there. All right, so every time you come in, you can pick up materials. Slowly but surely, you'll have tons of materials in your bag and go from there. Now, your bag will fill up very quickly, okay, your inventory, okay? So if you do not have the craft bag, you're not paying for the monthly fee through the Elder Scrolls Online, you're going to have to pick and choose the items that you need because it's going to be really hard. If you do a search online, you will find a few guides on how to do that. Um, what items to keep in your bag and what items not. And if you do not have enough space in your bag, you have to use a bag upgrade. And I will show you how to do that right now. All right, so I'm outside the pack merchant. Um, you got to look for this symbol. Okay, it looks like uh, just like a burlap bag with a rope around it. You come talk to him. All my bags are genuine. Okay, buy backpack fortified. upgrade. Okay, your first one's really cheap. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and accept that one. Now, if you have enough gold, All my bags upgrade to the amount that you want. So the next one, the first one's 400. Now the next one's 2,000, and it incrementally gets higher. So I have enough gold. I'm gonna go ahead and buy another one just to be safe. We'll just look at the All cost of the next one. 
The next one is 5,900. That's a little too high for me right now. I want to keep my gold for some other stuff. So now if I go into my inventory and I go under my bag, I can see now that I have the player capacity is 80. I have 80 that I can use and I'm using 41 slots at this time. Now remember always to deconstruct your items that you're not using. Uh, you got to go back to the stations and deconstruct. There could be some items in your bag that you can just sell directly. Um, like, let's find a person here that we can sell them to. There should be one in here, I think. No, nope, not there. The enchanter or the alchemist. So we come here. You need something. Go to the store. Go to the right. Go use your right shoulder button. Okay, so I have a Daedra husk that I can sell. So I'm going to go over the top of it, hit A. Okay, I got six gold. Now don't forget to repair your gear every so often, because if you don't repair it uh, and you're in a fight, you will eventually will have a problem. Okay, so we can hit X to repair it, or I see that I have a repair kit. So going under here, I'm not going to use a repair kit right now, because I'm going to save that for when I can't repair it in this way. I have a petty repair, repair kit. How this works is I go under the item that I want to repair. So let's say the rawhide helmet right here. I need to repair this. So I'm going to hit Y, repair. I will go ahead and use it, it's not a big deal. And now I've repaired my helmet. Now you have to have a kit for each of these. Whoop, sorry, I got to hit it one more time. And now I've repaired my helmet. Okay, now you have to have a repair kit for each item that you want to repair. Now, if you get the repair kits from the Crown Store, uh, sometimes they're given to you for free, sometimes you buy them, they will repair all your gear at one time. So you just select the repair kit, hit A, and it'll repair all your gear. All right, so now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go do some quests. <laughs> 